Good morning. This is Doris Sorrell from Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries, uh, Word Out Outreach, our outreach program. And we're out of Sacramento, California. Um, it's good to come into your houses again and into your lives to bring you the wonderful Word of God that is able to save your very souls. And uh, we are uh, filming today uh, doing the social distancing, just myself and uh, two of the media. <laughs> We're doing our part. Amen. Uh, but we did want to get this word out to you. Uh, these are very trying times. And you're going to be hearing, and you're already hearing a lot of people saying a lot of things about this COVID. And <clears throat> But uh, what God has given me is... Uh, that this is a time of introspection. That's what this is. Because God has slowed us down. He has slowed, slowed, slowed this world down. And so all of the things that we were, were so important in our lives, he stopped. We can't go to those places. We can't do this anymore for the time being. Because God wants us to think about the, 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 the way the world is and how it got that way. And uh, so he's talking to us. And he's not just talking to us Christians. God is talking to his people. Talking about the people that he created. He is talking to his creation. He is talking to the whole world. This is a pandemic, which means it is worldwide. So he's not just talking to the Christians, he's just not talking to the Jews or to the white or the black. He's talking to every human being that he created that we need to slow down and we have gotten too far away from God and that's why this world is in the mess that it's in. This happened once before, not the pandemic, but this very evilness uh, happened once before. I'm going to go over that with you in a minute. And when that happened, God destroyed. He destroyed. He brought a flood upon this evil. But I'll go over that with you. But what God has given me, and he's given different ministers different things to, to, to talk to you about. And so I'm going to talk to you about what God has uh, given me. And that is, every human being needs to understand the true condition of man. Now that's the title of this session. It'll be two parts. It'll be this Sunday uh, and next Sunday. The true condition of man. Now in order for you to understand that, I want you to go to Jeremiah 10 in your Bibles and verse 23. So Jeremiah 10, verse 23, I'm going to give you a couple seconds. I hope you all have your Bibles before you. Because this is Bible study. This is not, um, this should not be a place where you go to be entertained or just to hear, but to study. And so study means you have a study book. Now, if you don't have a Bible, that's all right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Just have your ears open to hear and write down the scriptures and look them up later. But for those of you that have a Bible, uh, when Word Out Outreach and these other ministers come up and, and try to tell you, hopefully they're coming from the Word of God, because that's what's going to help you. The opinions are not going to help you. And so, uh, hopefully by now you're in Jeremiah 10, 23, and we'll go there. And God told me to cause people to know their abominations, uh, to, so that they could understand the true condition of man. And so in Jeremiah 10, 23, we read, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, this scripture here, as with a lot of scriptures, cannot be read with a mundane, uh, monotone, uh, reading because there's some fervency there's a, some deep understanding in this scripture that Jeremiah the prophet is trying to get across Jeremiah the prophet and there's another one too and I can't think of it right now but uh, was known as the weeping prophet 
because God revealed to him the true condition of man. He revealed that to Isaiah, Hosea, uh, and some others. The true condition of man. And that left this prophet weeping and mourning over mankind because we don't know our true condition. And so I'm going to read it again and I'll, I'll explain something to you about the scripture. When Jeremiah says the way of man is not in himself, it is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. He's saying that we were not created from the beginning. We were not created to direct our own steps. Human being. Now, the problem is, we have gotten, we, we were actually created in the beginning to be directed by God, and I'll take you there in Genesis. But the problem is, we have gotten so far away from God that in, because of sin, it's, it's no one's fault, it's just the, a fallen world, and we were born into it. But we have gotten so far away from God, and God is not directing us, uh, most of us. He is not directing most of us. There's a, a tiny, tiny, tiny uh, amount of people that God is directing. And, 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 a, and, a, and a lot of people in the churches, talking about the Christian churches, are not being directed by God. We just go and admit it. We have lost our way. We, there's too many voices and too many programs and too many things and they've all gotten in the way and taken the place of God. But the problem is we need God because we can't direct our own steps because we are part of an invisible wor a world. There are two worlds that are simultaneously operating at the same time always and always have, well not always have been, there was always an invisible realm and then God brought it to be in the, the uh, material realm. But when he brought into the material realm, for us, uh, we are walking simultaneously, living simultaneously in an uh, invisible realm. Now, who resides in that invisible realm? There are beings that reside in the invisible realm. And those beings are, number one, there's God, whom we cannot see because he's invisible. There's Satan, which we cannot see because he's invisible. There's angels, there's holy angels, there's demonic fallen angels. Those are demons. Now, they exist. They are real, and we reside simultaneous with them. And demons, a whole function is to kill, steal, and destroy. That's destruction. And this is where you see all of this destruction. Uh, I'm talking about man's hand against man. I'm not talking about this play. God allowed this. Now that's my opinion. I really truly believe it. People say the devil did it. If the devil could do that, he would have been doing that all along. He don't have that kind of power, y'all. God is allowing this. Now the devil may take advantage of it. But what the devil is allowing, uh, is doing, is kill, steal, and destroy. He is taking mankind because we can't hear God's voice, and he is just beating us up and causing uh, destruction after destruction after destruction. And the reason he's able to do that is because we're blind. We think we got it going on. I'm talking about as human beings. We think that we don't need God. We don't need God. This is what we're thinking. We don't need God to direct us. Some people say that God, yeah, there is. Some people say there is no God. Some people believe that. And so they live their lives the way they want. You know, I'm just going to get everything I can, and then when I die, you know, that's it, you know. And some people believe that there is a God, but once he created us, then he left us alone to our own self, and now we do our own thing. And some people believe there is a God, uh, but they don't know him. So they want to serve him, but they don't really know him because they won't take time to read the book <laughs> that gives instruction. And so the world is in a big, fat mess because... We don't know our true condition. Well, here's the true condition of man. We need God to direct us. We were created that way, and just because of the fall didn't mean we still didn't need God. 
So that's what Jeremiah means in the weeping prophet when he uh, wrote this. And let me read it again with his fervent effectual, and effectual, the fervency of the man, the prophet, that God revealed. Now, now see, Jeremiah didn't know this on his own, by the way. God revealed it to him because God talked to, through the prophets in those days. And um, there were certain prophets. Now, today we got so many prophets, but God's not talking to them. We got a whole lot, many, what the Bible says, of false prophets. But what I'm telling you today is a true prophet. Amen. God revealed the true condition of man to him. And so here's, let me read it again so you can understand it. And he says, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now that means in, it is not in man, in man that walketh. That means no man, no man, not a single human being can direct their own steps because they were created to be directed by God. Now, let's do some comparison. Uh, I'll take you to, let me get my glasses on. Go back to Jeremiah 9 and 23 and 24. Same weeping prophet. And uh, he's comparing the human beings of the condition of human beings. And we have seen the mighty fall. We've seen it. In our day, I never thought I'd live through a plague, a pandemic like this. But we're seeing it, and we're all perplexed. We are all amazed. Uh, as close as I got was I saw a, in our backyard, we had some holly berry bushes or some kind of berry bushes, and my husband called me, come look at this. And I looked there, and there was a, a swarm of little bitty tiny birds. They swarmed the tree. And they was there for a while. They covered it. You couldn't even see a berry or green or nothing. When they got through with the tree, they swarmed away. It was nothing left. And the tree died. That's close as I got to a pandemic. That tree was destroyed. <laughs> and that perplexed me. But um, <clears throat> so, so uh, the prophet, the weeping prophet Jeremiah says, it's not in man. It's not in you. You weren't, in other words, you were not created to direct your own state. So if you direct your own steps, you're going to get waylaid because there's an invisible enemy that you can't see. And he sure enough have waylaid us. Okay. So now uh, in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, he shows you several conditions of man. And thus says the Lord, let not the wise man, so there's a wise man, glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. So there we see three types of man in the world. Let not the wise man, God said, don't glory in your wisdom. Don't glory in that. Because the wisdom of man can only go so far. There's a ceiling. You can only go to the natural height of that ceiling. You can't. Pierce. The wisdom of man cannot pierce the invisible realm. It can only go as far. I'm talking about knowledge in books and wise and knowing how to operate and stuff like that. God said, don't glory in that. Because I didn't, you know, I'm glad you're wise. But that's nothing to brag about because you can't even, your wisdom can't even, you, you can't find God through your wisdom. You have to go through Jesus Christ to get God. Amen. And so that's one type of man, the wise man. Those are the scholars. Those are the scientists, the doctors, the lawyers, all of those that have all that education. God said, don't glory in that. I'm glad you got that. But you can't direct your steps in the invisible realm, so you need me. And God is calling the wise man to examine themselves. There's something wiser than you. And it's called God. Something bigger. 
than your education. Something bigger than your wisdom. Because with all your education, all your wisdom, look at this thing that has taken over us. And we fight with all our might to try to figure it out. So don't glory in it. We, we thank God. Thank God for your wisdom. Thank God for your, your book learning. Thank God for your knowledge. Thank God for it. But don't you glory in it. Because there's so much more. Amen. So the next type of man is, he said, let not the mighty man glory in his might. The mighty man is the kings and uh, the presidents and uh, whoever's in authority. Ah, uh, mighty. You got power, in other words. You got power over people, uh, things. God said, don't glory in that. You know, you, 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 you braggadocious, you're mighty, you're powerful. Uh, you, uh, it's a, a lot of it is self-centered. Uh, but there's nothing to glory in that. Because you, mighty man, you need God. You cannot navigate the invisible realm without God. And God is saying, repent to the wise man and seek the Lord. He said, repent to the mighty man and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. You, you, you can't find him in your power and your might. Many of you mighty men are very prideful men. You need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and understand that there's something higher than you, your creator. You can still have your might. You can still be a president. You can still be uh, whatever position you're in and have all that power, but understand it came from God and don't use it corruptly. Amen. Repent. Examine yourself. The third one, he says, let not the rich man glory in his riches. That's the third one. So there are people on this earth that are rich. And they have money. And a lot of them, that money is their God. And without that money, they would not survive. They, they're just because they have money doesn't mean they're happy. So God is telling the rich man, uh, don't glory in your riches. You know, because everything comes from God. Don't glory in that. You know, you need God. And thank God for your riches. Help somebody out. You know. Uh, thank God for your riches. Thank God for your power. Thank God for your wisdom. But there's only one thing that pleases God. is when the, the, the wise man, the mighty man, and the rich man understand that they were created to be directed by God. Because they can't navigate the invisible realm. The invisible realm is full of demonic beings. And they influence you. And they corrupt your power, mighty man. And they corrupt your wisdom, wise man. And they corrupt your riches, rich man. So you need God to help you navigate through this realm. Now, there's a fourth type of man. And that's in verse 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understands me and knows me. That I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. He's saying that if you're going to glory in anything, the only person on this realm that can glory is the born again Christian that knows God. Not the born again Christian that just saying with their mouth, I'm a Christian and quote scriptures and stuff. There is a uh, God has made a way so that every human being can be born again. Anybody can be born again. Born again just means you went back to your original condition. That's all it means. That God has taken you back to your original condition. But if you don't know what the original condition is, <laughs> you just don't know. 
And you don't know because we've been blinded to the things of God since the fall. And so now God has revealed himself through Jesus Christ and has made a way for us to return back to our original creation. Uh, so now what we need to do to understand how we fail, um, we need to know how we uh, were, what we were created for, the way that we were created. Well, when God first created us, he created us in his image and in his likeness. And that's in Genesis 1. He created us in his image and in his likeness. And the way he created us was as a three in one being. Now don't turn your TV off. Don't turn the channel. Because when we start to get to this part, some people don't want to hear that. But see, there goes your wisdom which you can't glory in. You're not wiser than God. If God is saying to look at the way that he created you, you need to sit down during this time while you shut down and slow down and listen to somebody. Amen. This is the time to do it. You can't go nowhere else. Can't go to your ball games. Can't go to your pleasure centers. So listen. This is God that has shut you down. Amen. And so God create, originally created us as uh, with two invisible parts, as spirit, a spirit being. We are spirit beings. And that's one part. And we have a soul, which is invisible, which is our mind, will, and emotion. And then he put those two invisible parts into a physical part, which is a body. Now, you would look at each other. We all call ourselves spiritual and don't have a clue what we're talking about. Now, here's the true condition of man. When we are born, since the fall, since the fall, since sin in the garden, every human being is born, you still got those three parts. You're born physically, you have a body, a little body with eyes and head and everything. And you all, every single one of us have a mind, will, and emotion. We know what those are. Our mind is what we think with. Our will is what we determine. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. And then our emotions, we all know what those are. But we're all born with a dead spirit because it died in the garden. It died in the garden. It become non-functional. Amen. And uh, so we're born, every single human being is born handicapped. All of us. Because we have a part, a great part of us, that is not functioning the way it was intended to function. Now, how are we directed by God? With that spirit. But God doesn't uh, direct dead spirits. He's not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living. And so what does he have to do? He has to make your spirit alive. And that comes, that's going to come a little later, with show you how, through Jesus Christ. But what I want to show you now is uh, go to Genesis 1. How much more time do I have? Thank you. Genesis 1. To show you how you were created and what, and, and how God originally created you in the beginning to be directed by him. So if you're not being directed by God, oh wise man, oh mighty man, and oh rich man, an old religious man, if you're not being directed by God, you are messed up. So Genesis 1, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. 
And so God said, I have created all this for you. Take it and enjoy it. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be enjoying the, 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 the riches, the wisdom, uh, the might. We're supposed to be enjoying each other. We're supposed to be enjoying each other. But instead, we beat each other down. Kill, steal, destroy. Now, let's go and see where the direction is. And so, he says, uh, let me find it where he told Adam. Okay, so we go over to Genesis 2 and 15. Now, this is where God started directing man. Now, direction just simply means he's telling you what to do. And see, a lot of people today don't want God to tell them what to do. But see, that's, that's your true condition. That's why we're in the mess we're in now, because you don't want to hear what God said to do. Now, there go that finger. <laughs> you know, you don't want to hear that. I don't blame you. But really, we get to get back to, to letting God direct us. Amen. And so, it says here in Genesis 2, 15, And God took the man, the man, Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And God commanded the man. You see that? He commanded him. Saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat thereof thou shalt surely die. So he started correct, commanding or directing right from the beginning and telling man, do this, but don't do that. And see, that's the problem today with mankind. We don't want God to tell us what to do. We don't want to hear God. So we shut him out with all those voices, and God has shut them down for us to do some self-examination. And so you're going to be listening to these preachers, and listen to them, and just examine your own self. Amen. Father, I thank and I praise you for your word, I thank and I praise you, Lord God, for it going forth to accomplish every single thing that you set it out to do in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that the people that heard this word, Lord God, will not take it lightly, but they will begin to understand their true condition and submit and humble themselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for viewing Word Out Outreach with Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries. That was our pastor, Pastor Doris Harrell. I'm Deaconess Bridget Osby Thurman. If you are interested in a copy of any of our sermons, if you like for us to pray for you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, if you'd like to make a donation to our church, to our ministry, please write to Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries. You can shorten that with C-F-T-D-E-M at P.O. Box 293-266. Sacramento, California, 95829, and God bless the entire world. Thank you.